To finish, set the machine for straight stitch in left needle position and sew two to three stitches to tie off. For a four hole button, simply repeat this process for the opposite holes. The darning embroidery foot is used for free motion work. The most common type of free motion work is called stippling. Remove the regular presser foot and shank. Place the darning embroidery foot on the machine, making sure that the arm is resting over the needle bar. Tighten the side screw so that the foot is on the machine securely. Place batting in between the top fabric and backing fabric. Secure by pinning or basting together. Disengage the feed dogs. Set the machine for straight stitch. Thread the machine, then turn the hand wheel to draw up the bobbin thread. Lower the presser foot. Hold the fabric with two hands and then begin stitching in a meandering fashion, removing the pins as you go. Keep a moderately fast speed on the foot control while moving the fabric. The even feed foot is sometimes called the walking foot or dual feed foot. It works just like another set of feed dogs, helping to feed fabric through the stitching area. Use this foot to prevent shifting of quilt layers or shifting of seams in fabrics like velvet or corduroy. Remove the regular foot and shank. The even feed foot is then placed so that its arm is resting on the needle bar. Once it is in position, tighten the side screw. Secure the materials together, then sew. The quarter inch foot is most commonly used for quilting, but it can also be used for craft sewing. Pieced quilts are sewn with a one quarter inch seam allowance. It's important to the overall quality of the quilt that the seams are sewn accurately. Use the edge of the presser foot as a guide for sewing a one quarter inch seam. Sew and be sure to press the seam allowances before joining to the next piece. For best results, use a rotary cutter, mat, and ruler to cut fabrics. Fabrics that have cleanly cut edges will be easier to sew accurately. The open toe foot has a large open area in the front of the foot, providing a large view of your work, which is very helpful when decorative stitching or couching over ribbons and trims. For example, to do this decorative embellishment, place a ribbon on top of the fabric with a lightweight tearaway or water-soluble stabilizer underneath to help the stitches sew smoothly. Select a decorative stitch wide enough to cover the ribbon, then sew. Remove the stabilizer when finished. The edge joining foot is used for joining trims or fabrics. For example, place a fabric, which has been turned under and pressed, next to a lace trim. A tearaway or water-soluble stabilizer should then be placed underneath. Select your stitch. Sew, joining the lace and fabric together. Remove the stabilizer when finished. The pin tuck foot has several evenly spaced grooves on the bottom, which allow for sewing parallel rows of stitching closely together. It is used, along with a twin needle, to create wonderful surface texture on fabrics, very commonly seen on many garments as well as home deck accessories. The needle tension may be tightened to increase the depth of the tuck. After sewing the first tuck, place the fabric under the foot again with the previously sewn tuck under one of the grooves of the foot. Continue to sew until the desired number of rows has been created for the project. Because creating pin tucks will cause the fabric to draw in, do all tucked rows and then cut out the fabric from the pattern piece. 
Another very interesting effect can be achieved by first sewing several parallel rows, spaced as desired, depending on the look you want. After the first rows have been stitched, sew parallel rows again, the same distance apart, but at a 90 degree angle to create textured squares in the fabric. The ruffler makes it possible to quickly and easily sew projects that have long sections of ruffles or pleats, and the results look professional. Remove the regular shank and foot. Attach the ruffler, making sure the arm is around the needle bar, then tighten the side screw. The adjustment setting on the side of the ruffler controls the depth of the tuck, and the other adjustment on the top controls how often the tuck forms. It can be set to tuck every 12 stitches, every six stitches, every stitch, or not at all. The more often it pleats, the more fullness it makes. The other adjustment controls how deep a tuck the ruffler makes. Smaller pleats will result in softer ruffles and deeper tucks will create fuller ruffles. The cording foot has grooves on the top which are used to guide a yarn or cord. Stitches are sewn over cords placed into the foot as the foot guides them evenly. To do fabric embellishment, place up to three cords into the grooves of the foot. Thread the machine and then choose a decorative stitch wide enough to cover the cords being guided through the presser foot. To create gathers, tie a knot in the cord's end, then place the cord into the foot's center groove, then behind the foot. Sew a zigzag stitch over the cord, being careful not to catch the cord with the stitch. When finished, the cord can be used to adjust fullness. The sew and serge foot, also known as a side cutter, trims excess fabric while sewing. The machine is set for an over edge stitch with the width set at its widest setting. The seam is sewn, finished, and trimmed all at once. Remove the regular presser foot and shank. Attach the cutter, making sure the cutter's arm fits around the needle bar. Tighten the side screw. Guide the fabric here for a 5 8 inch seam allowance or here for a 1 half inch seam allowance. With the presser foot down, slowly turn the hand wheel to make sure that the needle goes over the stitch finger on the cutter. Cut a notch at the beginning of the fabric because the cutter's blade cuts prior to the needle stitching. Place the fabric over the first metal platform and then under the second metal platform. Sew slowly. There are a few things you should do periodically to keep your machine running at its best. However, you should have your machine professionally serviced at regular intervals. It's a good idea to clean around the feed dogs to remove any lint or thread bits from the whole area. If your machine manual instructs you to do so, lubricate with a drop of sewing machine oil according to the directions in the manual. Use only sewing machine oil, which is available from your Singer retailer. After oiling, be sure to sew on a scrap fabric to make sure the oil dissipates before sewing on your project. From time to time, your machine may not seem to be working properly. 
these problems are most often completely preventable. Let's take a look at a few common problems you could run into and how to correct them. When you sew, if you find that you have a lot of thread accumulating on the underside of the fabric, this means that you have actually threaded the upper thread incorrectly. Raise the presser foot lifter. Cut the upper thread and remove it. To make sure you have threaded the machine correctly, try this simple test. Leave the needle unthreaded and the presser foot up. Pull the upper thread toward you. It should pull freely. Now, put the presser foot lifter down and try pulling the needle thread. It should resist the pulling. If you are still able to pull the upper thread freely when the presser foot is down, this is an indication that the tension is not correctly threaded. Raise the presser foot and then completely remove the upper thread. After you have re-threaded the upper thread, put the presser foot down. If you do feel a significant difference in the tension when you pull the thread, you are now ready to thread the needle. Raise the presser foot, thread the needle, and sew. If the needle keeps breaking, check that you have the correct needle size for the fabric you're sewing. Remember, thicker fabrics require larger size needles so that they're strong enough to go through the thickness. Also, check that the machine controls are set properly for the stitch and presser foot that you are using. If your upper thread is breaking, check that you have correctly threaded the machine. Check to see if the thread groove of the thread spool itself is pointed toward the right so the thread isn't getting caught. Be sure the tension control is set correctly. If you have removed the bobbin case and reinserted it incorrectly, this could also be causing thread breakage. Check that your bobbin is free of nicks or chips around the edges as well. If your fabric doesn't seem to be moving well under the presser foot, check to see that your foot is correctly attached. Also, make sure the feed dogs are not disengaged. Check your stitch length as well. For more information on sewing machines, notions, and accessories, visit us on the web at www.singer.com.